What actually happens inside your body when you eat vegetable oil? Vegetable oil is one of the most common ingredients in the food that we eat today. We are even told by authorities to consume them, which really doesn't seem to make sense when you hear that people who have been told to consume these fats in place of other fats are more likely to die in general, die from heart disease specifically, or have heart-related events. Vegetable oil is not just a source of energy, a source of calories that you just burn off. A lot of it actually becomes a part of your body, like the structure of your cells, your brain, your cholesterol, where it can do a lot of damage, to say the least. And they may even stay in your body for years to come. Actually, these oils may not only increase your chances of having heart disease, they may affect your metabolism, metabolism, accumulate in your body fat, damage your DNA, even damage your eyesight, and potentially even decrease your lifespan. Now, this doesn't apply to all oils, and I'll tell you which types of oils to watch out for specifically shortly. What's important to note is that different types of fat have different structures and behave differently within your body, and that's where vegetable oils are special, or at least the types we're talking about in this video. Remember, the fats that you eat are not just calories, they affect your body in more ways than you can even imagine. So what happens when we consume these oils? Let's start with how they may affect your arteries. Some of these fats become part of your LDL cholesterol. You may have heard of LDL cholesterol before, the so-called bad cholesterol. When we consume vegetable oils that are high in a certain type of fat called linoleic acid, LDL cholesterol may contain more linoleic acid. Though here's the thing, linoleic acid is a unstable type of fat, which means that it can easily oxidize. And that can happen while it's part of LDL cholesterol as well, which increases LDL's susceptibility to oxidative damage. And oxidized LDL is said to be a predictor of heart disease. And in fact, it is found that when we consume more linoleic acid, for example, from vegetable oils high in linoleic acid, stay tuned, I'll show you a list of those oils shortly. When we consume more linoleic acid, we have more oxidized LDL in our body, which as I said, is a predictor of heart disease. Actually, this article shows a long list of evidence implicating linoleic acid-rich vegetable oils as a causative factor in atherosclerosis, oh my god, it's a difficult word, and coronary heart disease. Not to mention, of course, when people were told to consume these fats in place of other fats, more people died of heart disease. And not only may linoleic acid be a cause of heart disease, it may also mess up your metabolism. I don't think it's just a coincidence, I don't think you will think it's just a coincidence either after what you're about to see, that while vegetable oil consumption exploded in the last half century, so did obesity. We'll see how these oils may affect your metabolism, though first let me just say welcome back to my channel. In case you don't know me, I'm Ingun, a Norwegian Viking. I left my career working with physics and mathematics years ago to instead use these analytical skills to research nutrition and weight loss science. Because so much of what we're told is either wrong or misleading at best. And what I've found has completely transformed my own body and life, and now I'm helping others do the same. So if you'd like a different look at nutrition and how to lose weight based on science and common sense, then make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I have lots more tips and truth coming your way. Now, it's important to distinguish between the different types of fat. Like I said, it's not all vegetable oils that may be harmful. What's especially concerning are those that are high in what we call polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs for short, because those fats are the most unstable types of fat, like we talked about earlier. Linoleic acid, for example, is a type of PUFA. Again, don't worry, I'll show you a list of the oils that have high PUFA content shortly. So, we have seen that the consumption of vegetable oils having increased dramatically. And in fact, our bodies, our own bodies are proof that we are consuming a lot of these types of fats because these fats accumulate in our bodies. Remember, these fats may stay in our bodies for years to come. And not only that, it's found that obese people have more PUFAs in their body fat percentage-wise than leaner people. And note that that's due to their diet. The amount of PUFAs we have in our fat tissues correlates with how much PUFAs we consume. So if obese people have more PUFAs in their body fat, it means that their diets are higher in PUFAs. Actually, one study said that previous reports suggest that elevated intakes of linoleic acid during early stages of development may be related to the development of obesity. If this is 
true, then the reason we see such an increase in childhood obesity these days may be partly due to how women's breast milk these days contain a lot more linoleic acid. So even babies these days are consuming higher amounts of linoleic acid. And according to the researchers in this study, that can only happen if these women consume vegetable oil. Now, note that baby formulas can also be high in linoleic acid, which is of course worth noting. In fact, when feeding the same number of calories though with different types of fat to rats, those eating the diet highest in PUFAs gained significantly more weight. Again, they were eating the same number of calories. Crazy, right? And there are more studies in animals as well that show that the types of fat that we find in vegetable oils high in PUFA are especially fattening. By the way, if you enjoy this video I would really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and make sure you follow me on Instagram at Viking Ingun for lots more tips. Now how exactly this happens is very complex and involves a lot of different processes within the body. The one of the most important parts of our metabolism is our mitochondria where we produce energy. Without our mitochondria we don't burn calories. It's that important. And because linoleic acid can be incorporated into a structural part of a membrane inside the mitochondria called cardiolipin, where it can oxidize, it can lead to mitochondrial dysfunction and disruption of ATP production, which again is needed in order to burn calories. And that's just one of the ways PUFAs can cause problems with our metabolism. Actually, when these fats oxidize, they may produce something we refer to as oxlems for short, which are toxic substances. One of them is called h &E and is found to affect metabolism to favor storage of fat. When we heat vegetable oil, for example during cooking, these fats are more, even more likely to oxidize and produce these toxic substances. Which is one of the reasons why fried foods can be especially harmful. Because they are usually fried in vegetable oils that have been heated at very high temperatures, even for long periods of time, and that may therefore produce a lot more of these toxic substances. For example, H&E is found in french fries at fast food restaurants. Though these substances may also be produced when cooking at home with vegetable oil. And note that this production of these toxic substances can also happen within your body. It is found that if we lower our consumption of linoleic acid, we also have less of these toxins within our body. This of course makes a lot of sense. Though how dangerous are these toxins? Well, they may be implicated in a host of different diseases. For example, they are found in high amounts in obese youth with metabolic syndrome. Young atherosclerotic patients were found to have 20 times the amount of one of these toxins compared with healthy people. They may potentially be a driver of Alzheimer's disease and even cancer. In fact, researchers studying cancer in rats suggest that linoleic acid via diet may be required in tumor formation. Meaning, even if they tried, they may not be able to induce the same cancerous tumors in rats if their diet was, did not contain linoleic acid. And one study found that people with non-alcoholic liver disease had significantly elevated levels of oxlems in their blood. And the more severe the liver disease, the more oxlems they had. Plus, in another study, they were actually able to cure non-alcoholic liver disease through a diet low in linoleic acid. Now, I mentioned earlier that cooking with vegetable oils can increase oxidation. Though, of course, as we've seen, oxidation can also happen within our body. And indeed, it is found that when people consume more PUFAs, they also have increased oxidative stress. And this oxidation can happen within our mitochondria, which can lead to the production of these toxic substances, which may not only cause damage to our ATT ATP production, but also cause damage to our DNA and proteins within our body. In fact, it's found that increased consumption of PUFAs increase DNA damage. In women, having a diet high in vegetable oil had a massive impact on DNA damage. And not only that, there's even a correlation between how much PUFAs are found in the membranes of cells of animals 
and how long that animal lives. I mean, across species. The more PUFAs an animal has in their cell membranes, the shorter their lifespan. Are you starting to see a pattern here? Remember, humans have never in history consumed the amounts of these types of fats as we are consuming today. And we have never had this many health problems either. I'm not saying vegetable oil is the sole cause of all, all of this, though I do believe and the research suggests that it may be one of the main drivers. Obviously you won't get sick after just eating one meal containing vegetable oil or five meals or maybe even 10 meals. So remember, these fats accumulate in your body and even become part of the most important structures within your body. And you never know when they may start to oxidize or where that happens for you and therefore what specific health problems you may experience. So where do we find the most of these PUFAs? What vegetable oils should we pay particular attention to? In general, the types of fat we humans have been consuming for a long, long time are the healthiest kinds of fat. Makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Vegetable oils made from seeds are the ones I'd avoid. Here's a list of those I would watch out for. And note that these oils are everywhere these days. In all sorts of packaged foods and beverages, even in so-called healthy foods or healthy alternatives. And they're also the main kind of fat used in restaurants. Plus, not only do we consume a lot of these fats, we also soak our skin in them with lotions, makeup, sunscreen, even shampoos often have vegetable oils in them. And of course, what we put on our skin can get absorbed into our bodies as well. Now, I'm not saying we should avoid these vegetable oils at all cost. We need to use common sense here. Our bodies are designed to deal with a certain amount of oxidation, for example. We're not these fragile creatures designed to live in a glass bubble and never experience any hardship, so to speak. While at the same time, if we know something is bad for us, why wouldn't we do our best to at least 90% of the time avoid it? Now, I do want to quickly mention that it is said that our bodies require a tiny bit of certain types of PUFAs. Though most foods that contain fat also contain PUFAs, though often in very small amounts. So we most certainly do not need to consume these vegetable oils in order to get the PUFAs we need. Remember, these oils were not part of our diet for most of our existence on this planet. We we do not need them. And as we've seen, they may be one of the main reasons we're gaining more and more weight and having so many health problems. And now you know. And now you need to decide how much you're willing to expose yourself to these vegetable oils. It's never about that one time you ate fries on vacation or that one time while you were visiting a friend and you found out they, that they used sunflower oil, oil to cook your dinner. While at the same time, if you don't pay attention and intentionally try to avoid these oils, you may end up eating a lot of them. Because like I said, they are everywhere. So of course, as always, the decision is yours. I just prefer to make these decisions knowing the actual evidence. Because even though vegetable oils are so, so common in our foods today, most people have no idea how they actually affect our bodies. So that's why I wanted to share this with you. And if if you know someone who needs to see this, I hope you'll share this video with them. Now, when it comes to weight loss, vegetable oil is just one factor. There's so much more to consider in order to optimize your metabolism and so that you can lose weight more easily. And if you haven't already, you'll want to check out this video right here, which I'll link to below for how to lose weight more easily in 2023. And if you'd like a step-by-step -step approach based on science with simple video instructions and even personal support, then I'd love to help you out within my 90-day weight loss program called Slim By Science. Simply head over to slimbyscience.com for more info and to join. I hope to see you there. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Here are two videos you want to watch next. Enjoy and I'll see you in the next one.